so welcome back to yet another video um, a couple people have mentioned to me that they had like a hard kind of I don't know they were having a hard time with arcs and angles when it came to the stick figure video which is totally fair I think whenever it comes to doing those things stick figures make it a little difficult to see what's going on even when I was trying to show in the gesture video how to how to move them they're more of a placeholder for when you start adding like skeletal landmarks and stuff which it's, it's just gonna make seeing in perspective so much easier um, I think I show some of that in my pre-skeletal video so if you want to check that out feel free it's kind of smack in between a few of the sketchmas videos if I recall so uh, we're gonna we're gonna give this a shot I'm gonna show you kind of some of the arcs that I follow and what I've noticed, a lot of this is just based off of observation or watching other people's videos, reading books about anatomy and stuff where they kind of explain how far something can move. I think animation is really good for that. If you can watch people do model sheets or um, even just animate in general, I think that it'll super help you because they're constantly moving the limbs and it shows you how far they can go. And that does really help you in learning arcs, because that's what it's all about. It's just uh, measuring, pretty much, um, where something is like... I, I mentioned it tons of times in the other video, but bottom of the rib cage comes right up against your elbows. And that's really good, because then you can draw the elbows out pretty much anywhere, if you know where the rib cage is. Or you can put the rib cage in by pulling an arc from where the elbow is towards the spine. Like, um... So this is my first time kind of doing a, a drawing type video on this computer, so... If weird stuff is happening, I'm sorry. Okay, so I showed to just do this, but I'm just gonna draw the rib cage in so you can see. So whenever you draw your little shoulder arm boy down and you hit right here that bottom part of the rib cage not this part this part um that is i mean that's just where the arc is going to come from you can pull it up like this i did show it in the other one but i showed it a little flat so i'm gonna pull it in front and stuff like that and i'll try to show you what i'm talking about so you followed the arc that's where your arm would go if it moved and then if it moved up, I mean, in a way, this is going to change because that is about this collarbone, which will end up going like this. And as long as you're aware of that, um, you can still take this line and pull it here as that goes up. Still going to follow the arc. All of that is in a fixed position. This is a bone. It really can't move very far so it's going to constantly be on an arc so there's that then there's also with the knees so if you have um, a really hard time drawing people with their knees to their chest because you don't know where to put the legs the knees go pretty close to your collarbone or higher so there's that you can always draw a line between them to get them to be uh, close to the same size and then this part of your leg is pretty close to this part of your leg so you literally just follow that down it's it only gets difficult with stick figures again because it is so hard to see what overlaps what because we're not dealing with shapes we're just dealing with line and that really really changes it but it's really good starting point so you can fix your mistakes so even when I start out with more of a stick figure type thing in my regular drawing let me switch colors really quick um, I add depth to these just by doing stuff like this so that I can see that this is coming in front of this other line so yep all right uh, that's that's one thing and I'm gonna grab 
the whole me idea here. And that means, remember these are close to the same size, that you can follow this arc up and down. He's pulling it really high. To figure out what you're doing with your legs, let me erase the arc so you can kind of see what is leg. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can pull it down like this. That's going to follow. It's going to track and then down. So that's just the leg moving from its fixed point down and up and stuff. And that's an arc. That is what I'm talking about when it comes to arcs, is that you can see how things move in a line. They're in a very fixed position, generally. Again, because it is bone. Uh, most of these are based off of bone. That's why I'm using the stick figures. It's really easy to, uh, to see that, as opposed to seeing, like, big, chalky flesh over everything. And when something moves, the muscles are tensing, and it makes it more difficult to figure out exactly what's going on. Or why that's coming forward in case of you know the chromium process in your in your shoulder and your collarbone moving attached to that on this like little triangle even when it moves it's gonna move in a in a decently fixed position this is the shoulder the top of it so your neck would be over here somewhere but the whole idea is that if you can find these fixed positions and uh, figure out the arcs. It's going to make figuring out what you want to draw from your imagination so much easier and it's going to make it easier to see what's going on in pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to switch over to some images. I mentioned a lot in my other one that you can draw over the top of pictures. I know people look down on tracing. This is not tracing and calling it your work or whatever. This is just tracing to learn. Makes it a little easier to see what you're doing and uh, what is what in comparison to everything else, like drawing a line from here to here or whatever. You know what you're following. You understand what it is that you're drawing. So you can do this when the arms are lifted up or you can still draw a straight, not meta. And you can draw all the way down to the crotch if you like. Get that little triangle in. We've done this before. I know we've done this before. This is a recap for anyone who did not see that video. I know that you two did that um, have asked me about this. And don't worry either because I understand how it might not seem very clear. I just told you like, take what I showed you and run with it. Do some gesture drawings. And it's difficult. It It's so difficult. But you can do this first, even on the gesture drawings you're already going to do. Just save the pictures, whatever. Draw over the top of them, figure out what you're working with. Your proportions might not be the same as a regular human being. Starting out with this is really helpful, but eventually you can change it up. I do. Put our muffin hands in there. Um, remember that I said you can draw lines, and that will be roughly the bottom of your ribcage. That means if you can't follow your arms to figure out where the bottom of your ribcage is, and you're not sure, remember that from the shoulders down to the top of your pelvis, you can draw that X. And roughly the midpoint, very roughly, is going to be your the bottom of your ribcage, which will help you find... Do -do -do -do, the arc to your elbow. So yeah, that means that if this cross is here in front of him, that would be your arc out. And that would put the wrist here and the hand here. This is helpful when you're like, man, I have no idea how to draw this in perspective or whatever. You just draw something straight out that you already know that the elbow's at the bottom of the rib cage, that um, the upper parts of the arm in comparison to the lower parts of the arm when adding the shoulder in 
they're they're pretty even they're close enough that you can get away with it and then you're just going to tack the hand on and that's going to be you know like roughly roughly mid thigh this guy's got very long hands or not hands but arms it's pretty awesome so yeah that that's a that's a good way to figure it out and it does help when you're like i don't want this pose i want to slightly change it you know for something that you want to draw and you you can do that so i didn't show this in the regular stick figure video but this is just drawing that bone out and you can do this if you want or you can do what i did in that video and you can draw from up here down to the knee down to the foot and stuff let's speed through that a little bit okay oh yeah he didn't he didn't get his pretty head he's gonna do this very simply Womp. okay so very easy to see i i hope anyways that this is very easy to see and um you can always follow those arcs and then put in front if you want for the knee figure out where it goes everything is on an arc you can always measure in some way or another if you don't know how to do that you can look at pictures like we're doing right now you can trace over the top of them you can draw beside them and try to almost replicate what you're seeing or change it up in any way that you want there is nothing wrong with that So feel free to do that. I'm gonna do this kind of quickly here. Okay, on to the next one. Once again, I am just tracing out these main points. And I'm redrawing all these little landmark guys and everything to show you some simple ones, but we're going to do some other ones too. Just like simple arcs and, and proportions and things. Didn't even actually draw from the elbow there. My bad. See those arcs applying? They're nice. Okay. And the next one. This guy has great features. Remember in the other one I told you that this will fit like a little box or a rectangle down to here? And that'll just mark kind of where your shoulder needs to be. Okay, so there we are with these, very simple, I definitely recommend you do these a few times and actually practice drawing your arcs yourself with just the sticks and the circles, make it as simple as you can, and uh, measure other things. You can measure where the hand is going to fall on the leg, you can measure what the legs are going to do if they were to move out like this just by following, got a little wiggly there, just by following these arcs. So, yeah, I definitely recommend that you try doing that yourself because it helps you, it kind of like imprints it in your brain so that you know what's going on and how you can apply it to your own drawings. Okay. So here's some male poses. 
some ladies as well, but we're gonna do some male poses first. Let me knock this back. Okay. So we have one of the same guys here. You're finding your collarbone shape. I mentioned in the other video that you want to make sure you use those rounded lines because it really helps show that something's moving forward. We have nothing else to show these things when we're working in simple stick figures. So, bottom of the rib cage is somewhere here. There's our crotch triangle. If you're having a hard time doing these uh, to start out with, it's a little weird but I always feel like I do a bit better at figure drawing and uh, almost any other exercise. If I draw first and try to do it from my mind, it might not turn out perfect, but it gets my brain going, I suppose, and really helps me figure out what I'm supposed to be seeing when I start. Right here, you can actually see the rib cage, like very clearly. Okay elbow to the wrist you see this foreshortening here and it looks very strange with stick figures so I did mention that in my comment back to you that it is very strange it's difficult to look at without you know having some sort of shape to it which is why I generally draw in the skeletal shape kind of way when I draw, um, if I'm not having a really hard time, if I'm having a really hard time, this is what I do. I just do the stick figures. You can see this would go up to the collarbone, like I was talking about that knee. Into the foot. pose. New model. These are all from, well, I guess most of these are from sample packs and some of them are from that, some that I have bought. You can follow this front line, but you can also make a line right through the body. It's whatever works for you. When I'm drawing on top, it's so much easier for me to follow that natural line. You draw a little bit lower, I believe. And our ribcage bottom. We'll curve that because we're looking slightly up at him. Switch to my heart eraser. And then we'll get this. It's actually on a tilt right now. A little pelvis. And last one for the male.
if what uh, if what a lot of you um, guys were trying to figure out uh, was you know how to do this from memory or how to do this from your mind, we'll try to do some of those. I'm not gonna say they're gonna be perfect because, like I've been saying a lot lately, I'm very, very rusty. So, once again, here we are. Just some quick ones. And let's move on to some ladies. I only have three here. I don't know why I didn't do an even number, but here we are. So the only difference is obviously the hips are generally wider and the female legs bow in further than the male ones do. Males tend to stand very square like a very boxy rectangle shape their legs naturally take and then for women our knees bow closer together generally obviously everyone's built differently but the bones say a lot of what you need them to say for you when you're drawing stick figures don't really have to add hair or anything They will tell you. Just drawing through finding that arm. <laughs> I don't need to, but I just wanted to. Okay, and boop. Bottom of the rib cage. On to our next lady. I think this was from Pinups. As you can see right now, the little measurements that you can do while you're drawing these things finding that arc and things like that understanding that information so helpful honestly um, through doing a lot of figure drawing I kind of picked up on a lot of that information when I thought that was the only way you could learn anatomy <laughs> It's not. It's one way. And that definitely helps you apply it and understand how things move, but... There are other ways. And this one's more at a hyper angle, but the arcs still apply, which is awesome. And then if we were to put her knee down, we would follow an arc down, and this would be roughly where her leg was. So that helps you change the pose when you don't like certain aspects of it. You just have to watch your balance. These are the, oops, these are the kind of practices and stuff that I recommend that you try and then really look at them like really observe and kind of measure things not with a with a pen or a pencil or whatever measure them against each other or what they usually look like or whatever get used to what they look like in a stick figure body When they're foreshortened. It'll help you when you move on to the more skeletal phase, which will clear a lot of things up for you. Let me shut this off. So you see the poses are clear, but anytime you're doing any sort of hyper angle or um, intense perspective where you're not dealing with a very, very simple plane, 
that all of these are sitting on. Like, you know, she's sitting in this space. And yes, it has, like, two edges. You're not dealing with a third plane. It still can kind of stand on its own as a 2D scribble. See? And then these ones, as you're getting more... <laughs> more interesting uh, action poses where things are coming in front of themselves, it's gonna look weird. It's gonna look very strange. So I'm gonna kind of show you how I deal with that when I'm drawing. Because you can see the reason that everyone says they can draw the front and the side view and the back view is because it's so flat and it's... I'm not gonna say it's easy. It's not always easy and I don't think that's fair to say. But... I do think that it's easier for your brain to understand what's going on with simple lines as opposed to this or, um, my bad, this one. So, yeah, let's see what we can do, because that is all. Um, just looking at pictures and tracing them, obviously. Um, what I would move on to honestly, is before doing what I'm about to do, um, because I've done the gesture drawing attached to that other video, I want you to try and find pictures that they do have angles, but they're not so difficult that you're not really sure where to draw your lines and things. You can always simplify them or slightly change them or whatever to make them easier for you to see. But I would do gesture drawing using the stick figures not tracing, just looking, observing, and trying to do your stick figures. There's nothing wrong with it. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to um, have accidentally changed the proportions or not get the rib cage in exactly the right place. It's okay. That's totally fine. As you continue doing it, you're going to be able to measure those things a little bit easier. They're going to come naturally to you. You really will, just with practice. I promise I did not always draw things very well. I still don't always draw things very well. It's just the way that it is. So, we're going to switch over and we're going to try to, um, this is what I would do after the gestures. I'm going to show you me drawing things from my head and slight ways that I change the stick figure or whatever to be slightly skeletal so that you can see more clearly what's going on and yeah, so let's just get started before I make people wait forever. So I do still draw a very simple head. Um, Sometimes I do draw these shoulders first, but I prefer to figure out my rib cage. So if you can't figure out your rib cage, which is okay, um, just don't draw, don't draw it in first. Do what we've been doing. And I'm a little more sketchy see like I add kind of more of a shape to these things make things darker or lighter so they're easier for me to see follow my arcs you can see where I've made little mistakes by measuring between the two things And I can do arms like that very quickly because I've measured them a jillion times. But again, remember that this upper part is close to this lower part in size. So you can always measure to make sure that you've nailed it. So there it is. That's the start. Very, very simple. And I would add stuff on from there to make it more clear. But you don't need to. Again, this is for people who really want to draw from their imaginations. Even still, drawing from your imagination is really difficult when you don't do it a lot. It is a skill you have to build up. So I do recommend that you practice and find reference when you need reference. There is absolutely no shame in using reference.
I'm leaning back in my chair if you hear it rocking. I always lean back to see the whole post so I can see if I've gone wrong somewhere. I think I did a bit on this leg here. You can see me occasionally, I draw um, just a line from the body up towards whatever I'm drawing. This is also my measurement for that square sometimes, is I actually am thinking about how the scapula is sticking out over here, just because I've drawn it a few times in the skeletal view. So I still recommend going and watching the pre-skeletal video if you're still trying to do these from your head and the stick figures are being a pain in the butt. But you can start with them simply, they're just to check proportion, to understand arcs, and uh, doing simple angles, very simple angles, like uh, the example I showed in the other video was having someone lean forward a bit, if I remember correctly. So you're just making these curves. Let me change his head a little. I'm just going to jut it forward. So, yeah, you can use those curves in so many different ways, but it's not always going to be, it's not always going to be perfect. Some of it might be hard for you to understand, and you have to draw it in a different color, or what have you. Um, a lot of this stuff is definitely based off of the Loomis method. So just uh, simplifying that into a way that was easier for me after I'd studied it a couple times. There's other artists online who, you know, use some, some form of that in their art. Uh, David Finch, he's a comic book artist. He does like superhero comics, things like that. If you haven't heard of him, I recommend you look up his YouTube channel and watch his gesture drawing video because he does a skeletal... Uh, he does a skeletal kind of take on it as well, and uh, I was glad to see someone else doing something very similar to what I do. Obviously more effective, because he's had a lot of practice, and he's a fantastic artist, and seems like a very chill dude, so you can check out his videos if you want to call him time. And uh, another person that I saw recently doing something close to this was Tim McBurney so you can look him up as well and I'll probably I'll probably just link their channels cuz I think it's helpful but definitely David Finch because of the amount that he ends up drawing in the videos is very helpful it's so nice to see a lot of uh, a lot of examples in one go, seeing someone just make them. Let's see, um, other types of angles. See if I can do this today with my tired, tired self.
So if you've ever seen um, pictures of people in uh, perspective, watch movies, whatever, their head always seems to be closer to their collarbone because our heads naturally push forward to balance out our bodies. me figuring out where my arm's gonna go alongside what I'm gonna do. Knee. Sorry there, I was about to draw a triangle. That's a measurement for me when I'm trying to draw in perspective so I can see better. Well, see things more easily, I guess. Yeah, you can see that it looks looks a little weird, but ladies and gentlemen, it's perspective. You take the whole body to the feet. If you got it right, that midpoint of that X should be roughly the crotch. That's one way to check it. Check the perspective. And of course the measurements and things. What other one should we draw? I always have a lot of fun doing these. Love trying to figure out poses. Let's do one where we're kind of below it. This foot's gonna seem really big. That's one way to like force perspective. I'm not the best at it, so again, I would look at people who know what they're doing. And I've also taught before. This is the kind of stuff that I do when I'm setting up comic pages. I'm not a, a brilliant comic artist, but uh, this this was all huge game changer for me. So I do obviously the head where someone's looking. This part of the body. I like to put the rib cage in uh, the spine. Our little crotch triangle, the legs, I usually do these slightly skeletal shapes because they make it easier for me to see. That was me without thinking, kind of just measuring across to the other knee so I knew if I had it right. And you see me doing some of these in my videos and things. I switch it up occasionally, but not by much. This is the way that I found that was easier for me. And I know how the flesh sits on this. I usually do like a little tummy bar. <laughs> like a little almost cylinder type thing. Sometimes it only encases the spine so that I can see how much it's bending. Sometimes I do when something's leaning forward. I scribble like this just to show that it's going to be pinching when I draw it. And it's very easy to draw all of the flesh and things over the top of. After you've practiced it a lot, and I have, I can find notebooks from when I was, gosh, 10 to 13, where I was trying to do the stick figures, and I was trying to put the flesh over them. And it looks like water balloons attached to a stick, so. Took a lot of practice. A lot, a lot of practice, but you can do it. Look at the arm, there's an arc, or I guess not an arc, uh, a rhythm.
I do stylize stuff quite a bit when I'm drawing for myself, but just simple things. You can teach yourself even with shape. And you can find those in a lot of my drawings where I just, I go down, I curve up in the arm and uh, legs and things like that, I sit sitting back further. And that's just because I know how these muscles and things kind of look in that that bone does have a slight curve. Not to the point that I drew it, but it does have a slight curve. So you can see me drawing on the edge. Right here and here. And I'm doing that thing that I was telling you a lot of people do where they encase it in uh, kind of a cylinder shape. Because it is kind of a cylinder shape and I just show it on the edge so I can see what part of the body I'm drawing like if I was drawing up from the side and I did this I sometimes do this just creating this curve so I can see this is the edge of the body and I can figure out how I'm looking at it I have another simple way that I draw legs when I'm not doing just a plain stick figure. I do something quick, just like that, just to show what's going on, so that if I lift the leg, I can actually see, I can actually see the, uh, the shape that's in front and the shape that's behind and kind of what's going on. These are fine when the legs aren't doing much. You can actually figure it out. And you can do lo these little wrapping lines. If you're like, the body's going this way, but the legs are going down or, you know, whatever. Just to have your mind kind of come to understand where things are going in space. This is what it's doing. And then what we're drawing is that. So of course it's going to look a little strange. That does not mean that it's wrong. And that's a funny thing about perspective anyways. Oh, a cool thing, my family and I got better internet, <laughs> so I'm hoping I'll be able to stream more, so I will make sure that my Twitch is linked if anybody's interested, and whenever I have time, I will try to stream. I don't have time always, but I will try. I usually just scribble a lot when I stream, it's more comfortable. with those wrapping lines. It's like supposed to be going up and I want to show that. So I'm just going to do that so that I know when I put my flesh on this needs to, this needs to overlap to show that it's going up. This. I don't know if this is 100% clear, but if it does help you, let me know. Try to do those exercises I talked about if you'd like, and tell me if they helped. If they didn't help, don't be shy. 
let me know. And uh, maybe we can get on my Discord and we can do some screen sharing. And then you can ask me questions directly and or even on a stream and I can see what I can do and we can break down your questions one by one so obviously I can't hear you yelling at me right now like I don't understand what this is I don't know why I don't know why I don't understand and it's probably that I haven't fully covered it in a way that's understandable so don't worry about it we'll figure this out um, when it comes to stick figures and changing up proportions like I said that a lot of people will do. You can always make a really long torso, short legs, long arms. Things like that just become more simple. Me adding little skeleton shapes. I actually kind of want to give this person wings. And it just makes it so much easier when you add the skin on to your gestures so now if I wanted to draw this guy I would now know that instead of being at the bottom of the rib cage I put his elbows at the top of his pelvis and that the tip of his wings go mm, roughly very roughly halfway down his um, shins and the ribcage is actually pretty normal, but this upper part of the torso, I made longer. So I'm just going to curve it longer. going to give him his pelvis. Step his tiny little chibi legs out. His knees would now go quite a ways below the collarbone. If I put them up, I'm just going to follow that down so I can find it. These little leggies are short. Make him running. <laughs> this is where it gets fun. This is the fun stuff. And then I want his arms. See what I did? I instantly changed it to the proportion from before, so. You can't get stuck in your head. You really can. So this arm's gonna be back here. Awesome. <laughs> so, let me actually clean this up just a little bit. You can see. I have to move his head forward. We created a new proportion. Give me this one leg just a little bit long. Out of habit. Give him the smaller feet like on that thing because it's awesome. Makes me laugh. So there you go. And that's just learning how to deal with the proportions and change them make your own creatures and characters and and whatever and draw them simply and figure out if the, does it look good do these proportions that I've come up with look good like drawing a gentleman with really wide shoulders bit of a short torso but really long legs in comparison we could also give him short legs but we just did short legs and you could decide that it's really close to his pelvis, his rib cage. And then you could take these little shoulders. Do arms are so big. These muscles push that out. give him oops, a longer neck and he would just be this big guy 
Now let's try giving him short legs. So you see what I mean? You can you can change this stuff up. That guy's a little closer to um, an almost correct proportion, but you can always make him smaller, make him bigger, change different parts. Are his arms long? Are they short? Are his legs really long? Are they really short? His rib cage is it big? His pelvis is it big? Uh, is that whole upper body shaped like a big box? You know, things like that. You can always change that, and the reason that I'm showing you this is because you can stylize things and make them fun using this, figure out what you like, and then find out the other shapes that you want over the top of it that are appealing to you. And also to show you, messing up proportions is not the end of the world, it's actually a design choice. So yeah, what I recommend you if you want to draw people, being able to have a starting point you know, like drawing a normal person <laughs> uh, with normal proportions and yeah, totally, it makes it, it makes it easier to be like oh, well I usually measured that here and now it's here just gives you an idea of, of just like I did here where I knew where stuff usually is now I know where it actually falls and that helps me remember it. it helps me remember the change that I made and then also when I go to draw another character that's still a person, supposed to be a normal person even when they're slightly stylized it just keeps me it keeps me centered it keeps me it keeps me um focused on proportions and what i'm trying to draw the subject that i am drawing and you can use the stick figure thing on animals and all that stuff just to help you when you're first starting out with the proportions so whenever you start sticking skin on it's not so hard to figure out where everything's supposed to go. You've already measured, you already know where most of the stuff is under the skin now. Whenever you're like, ah, oh, well, the elbow goes here and that means the rib cage is here, then you're gonna know where the muscles sit on that because you know the measurements, you know where it is. And when you're drawing from life or whatever, um, if that's something that you're interested in, you have that ability to measure and figure it out because you did stick figures, <laughs> essentially. So, yeah.